Good morning. Good to see you all here this morning. Some of you know me, if you don't, I'm uh, Reverend Ken Betcher, used to be the pastor here, now retired, <coughs> and uh, filling in on a Sunday. Uh, the Labor Day Sunday has become a little bit of a tra tradition. I've been here, I think, now for three or four years on this weekend. Our pastor likes to go on vacation in September, and so I'm one of the fillers. And uh, it's good to be able to stand here with you uh, once in a while, like I am now. Um, announcements are, we're going to take care of a few of those now. Um, anyway, um, the first thing I want to share is I do have a note here, um, and I think uh, you all might want to remember these people. Right here in the front, up toward the front, we have the Lees, and uh, they have a son by the name of Inho, who, we be, we, who I have become more familiar with than even them, because Inho has been coming to our home for piano lessons for how many years, I'm not sure, and a very good pianist. But they are going, Inho is at the University of Wisconsin right now in Madison, if I got it right, correct? And they're going to be moving down to northern Illinois, and this will be the last Sunday they are with us. So. Um, if, if you know them or want to get to know them before they leave today, wish them well, and uh, I wish you well. Uh, we've been so glad to have you as a part of our church here. Uh, you know, you've been here regularly, and you've offered a lot of inspiration to us, and so thank you for your participation. Remember them after the service if you get a chance. This month, the mission project is the three of the local food pantries. I am the one who is responsible to tell you about those. And um, we, this church is going to, during the month of September, our mission offerings are going to go to the three food pantries, which are uh, Lakeshore Cap, which is down in Sturgeon Bay on 3rd Street. Uh, Feed My People, uh, down that way, over on 14th, I think it is. And uh, you're mostly acquainted with those, but also we give some of our funds to the uh, uh, food pantry in Southern Door, which is located in the Maplewood Catholic Church. Uh, it has a different name, but it's a it's not St. Mary, that's easy, but it's Mary something else. Anyway, it's the Maplewood Catholic Church. And uh, so we share our funds with them. I've been looking at Helga back there right now, does our community stuff. She works at Lakeshore Cap, big helper there. Uh, uh, Karen Krieger, I believe, works at uh, Feed My People. So we have, we have good connections to our, our food pantries. And uh, so we want to support them this month. So with your help, we'll get that done. And we've also scheduled Closer? Closer, okay. Uh, I used to be able to shout louder, but I can't do that anymore. Um, anyway, uh, we, we scheduled a food walk for the uh, third Saturday of September. There are five Saturdays, I believe. And uh, maybe I'm wrong there. But anyway, it's the, uh, I can't spit out the date right now because I didn't write down my head. Anyway, so the third uh, in three weeks. We're, we're going to do a food walk. We gather here at the church at uh, 9 on a Saturday morning, walk for an hour just to be out there to say something about food pantries. Okay, um, other announcements. Uh, these, these could be a considered prayer concerns also. Um, this week I had a chance to visit Dick Chappelle, who is presently in hospice care in Green Bay, and uh, he's at the Unity Hospice Center down there. It's a beautiful site. Uh, Dick is, seems to be fine, he's mentally very alert, get to chat with him, but uh, I think life is very boring because he can't do too much. His eyes aren't good and other things don't work well, and uh, he's, uh, so if you ever get a chance, you know Dick, you can stop at Unity Hospice, you have to look it up, it's in a brand new building off of Highway GV, and uh, you, you'll be able to find it. Also, I have a note here that Miriam Erickson, who is the mother of Jeannie Bernard, grandmother of Ann Bernshine, 
is now in hospice care. And uh, let us keep her also in our prayers uh, because this is a difficult time in life when you are not in a good physical way, in a good physical way, and uh, you're still kind of, you know what's going on, and, but you're not doing anything. And it's tough. So uh, let's remember these people. Other announcements are printed in the bulletin. I don't think there were too many printed for today, so I'll let you read those. And um, But uh, anyway, so we're glad that you are here. Indeed, this is the day that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm going to have you join me in the opening call to worship. It's number 769. It's Psalm number 3443. And uh, it's actually, I see, some, <laughs> it turned around in the bulletin. I thought it was, I thought it was going to say 34, and it is 34, but it's 43 in the bulletin. But it doesn't matter. It's still on page 769, that's the one we're after. So why don't you all stand and uh, I'll give you instructions on how to do that. Um, okay, so I'm going to read and you will respond with the, with the bold print, okay? It's on the bottom of the page. I will bless the Lord at all times. God's praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt God's name together. Look to God and be radiant, so your face, faces shall never be ashamed. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear God and delivers them. Let us sing together hymn number 732. And let us bow in prayer. And, O oh God, we thank you for this day and this time together. We're thankful for your spirit that meets us here. We are thankful for the uplifting feeling that we have when we come together with Christian friends. So bless us and help us, O oh God, to receive your word in a new and fresh way today. We're thankful for worship, for the chance to honor you a great God who loves us and has given his son for our salvation. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. The scripture readings this morning are from, first from Mark, three different 
uh, verses or chapters. Uh, Mark chapter 7, verses 1 through 8. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around him, they noticed some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups and pots and bronze kettles and beds. So the Pharisees and the scribes ask him, why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesies rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. The second reading comes from Mark uh, chapter 7, verses 14 to 15. Then he called out again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. The third reading, which is from Mark chapter 7, verses 21 through 23. For from the inside, from a person's heart, come the evil ideas which lead him to do immoral things, to rob, kill, commit adultery, be greedy, and do all sorts of evil things, deceit, indecency, jealousy, slander, pride, and folly. All these evil things come from inside a person that make him unclean. And finally, the last reading comes from James uh, chapter 1, verses 17 through 27. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave birth to us by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved brothers and sisters. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for human anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers for, of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and, on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. Thus ends the readings for today. We're, we're going to change the order here a second. Uh, oh, I'll get the organist's attention. We're, we're, we're going to do a children's sermon now. Thank you. So now you know the intro to the hymn. And we, uh, Elaine is going to, children, you come forward. I think there's some hiding in the back. I'm not going to stand up here alone. Come on, kiddos. <laughs> um, how about you big kiddos? Did you have a good summer? Y'all big kiddos didn't have a good summer? <laughs>
Did you folks have a good summer? Oh, good. Thank you. Come on up. Come on up. Did you? Did you kids? Did you little kids have a good summer? That's good. So have you started school? Let's go on this side here today. Have you started school? No. When do you start school? Tuesday? Tuesday. That's Tuesday. How about you, Ava? Did you start yet? We're going to sing happy birthday to her. And y'all can help out here. Her birthday's on Monday. Happy birthday to you. Happy Happy birthday to you. Okay. Do you know what today? What tomorrow? What? Another pet snake on my birthday. Did you say a pet snake? <gasps> oh, she's a very unique young lady. She has one pet snake, and she's getting a second one on her birthday, and I've got chills running up and down my spine, because <laughs> that is not my favorite animal. But that's really cool. That's awesome. Oh, good grief. <laughs> okay, enough of that. You start school on Tuesday, and uh, you've had a good summer. Tomorrow is Labor Day. That makes me kind of sad, because it, it says, you know, school, right, right. School, school is coming and summer fun is done. Um, answer a question for me. Why did you come to church this morning? It's Sunday. That's good. Why did you come to church? So we can learn. So you can learn. So you can learn about what? Who can we learn about? Who, who can we learn about today? Jesus and God. Okay. Now, you came to church, and you believe Jesus and God, you're going to learn about him, and he's here. What about when you girl to go to school on Tuesday? Do you think Jesus or God goes with you? You think so? Yeah. And you said yes? And you said? You will. Yes. Yes. Good. Because I want you to remember that. Now, I'm going to give all the big kiddos out there a challenge. Because you see them on Sundays. And I want them to help absolutely positively remember you kids, you girls, during the week. And I'm going to ask them to pray for you when you go to school. I'm going to ask them to pray that you will be safe, that you will be able to learn what you're supposed to learn. Do any of you ride the bus? You do? I'm going to, we're going to pray that your bus driver will be safe and that you will have a good, safe school year. Can the big kiddos help me out with that? Okay. We're going to say their names out loud, really out loud, one more time. And I am perfectly serious. We need to remember these children. Obviously, we've all got grandchildren, other children, friends of our children. And we need to pray for them as they start a new school year, that they will have a good year, that they will remember that Jesus, that God is with them every moment of every day at school and we'll keep them safe. Here's their names one more time. Nina. Nina. Evelyn. Evelyn. Ava. Ava. Sai. Sai. Can we pray, please? Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning and we do ask your blessing on these four precious girls up here. We pray that they will be safe when they go to school this year. 
that the bus drivers, the teachers, their school buildings will be safe. Father God, we thank you that all four of these girls know that you are with them. And I pray that as a congregation, we would remember to pray for them and to have them be reminded, for these girls to be reminded each and every day as they go back and forth from school, that God, Jesus, is with them every step of the way and can keep them safe and give them a good day. And we will give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, girls. You made my day. Have a safe school trip on Tuesday. And we'll, check, we'll have to check in with you and see how school's going, okay? You're welcome. with my soul. Okay, let's do a mic check here now. You're all hearing this, are you? And in the back, are you happy? Okay, they're happy too, that's good. Okay, so I don't have to, I can turn this one off then. How's that? You want me to use this one too? I'll be double mic'd today. We'll do our best. I, I, I've never given a one-handed sermon. Anyway, it's, it's, it's fun to be back here and to share this time with you people. And um, I think you may well have to switch. You know, we, we switch here to, actually, that it's a thing for your good health that I switch from that side to this side because you sit there and for half an hour you look over there. And then we make your next, next turn over here and so you don't go home with a stiff neck that way. So um, 
but right now the fan here is blowing my my stuff away, so uh, I may become a center aisle preacher. Can you turn it down a little bit? Okay, very, thank you. So um, I, I'm not as free as Pastor Dave who gets out in the middle and he's, I don't know how he does it, but anyway, he remembers everything and says everything right and all that stuff. Now I can remember some of the stuff I, I've prepared, but I can't remember how to say it correctly, you know, to make the impact that you're trying to make. So I'm afraid of that. So I do use a, a bit of a manuscript, which I try not to look at too often, but you'll notice I do look down. And I'll to hold the mic too. So, uh, okay, this is my turning hand. So anyway, my it's Labor Day and uh, I don't wanna wear that out, but on Labor Day, you know, we, one of the last things people want to think about is labor, right? They want to get away and uh, have fun somewhere and do something different. And Labor Day is not a church holiday or a religious holiday of any kind, but really there's a sense of spirituality to a holiday like Labor Day because um, you know, we humans spend a lot of time doing labor. And it's not lost, you know, like it doesn't mean anything. It, it's very important. And so it's a spiritual event in life. We're going to work every day. Not always easy, but we do it because it's necessary for us. You know, as um, human beings, typically, even some people say they don't have a job. No, everybody seems to have a job. And some of us go to work at certain places. We have different kinds of jobs, uh, formal type jobs. Uh, many housewives work much harder being at home and the mothers who take care of kids. And so we all have something that we do, and many of us are even just labor as volunteers. And that's very important to the life of this world. We all find something constructive to do that we call labor. And while sometimes we may look negative, negatively upon our jobs, our work and professions indeed have for us a very positive uh, value to human life. Now the word work has several meanings. And today's gospel and epistle readings are in them the idea of work is discussed. And at least in three different ways. Now the minister always tries to find three points, right? So I got three ways going here. You know, first we have Jesus chiding his Jewish friends, the priests and the Pharisees, for their outward rituals which seem to offer no apparent practical value to faith or life. You see, they belonged, now I gotta leave the mic down here a sec, they belong to the clean hands club. Very important to the Jewish faith. And that's not all bad, because our mothers taught all of us at a young age that we should be washing our hands before meals and other times. So clean hands are good. We know from the recent pandemic that washing our hands became an important ritual for all of us in life and because we don't want to be we didn't want to be germ spreaders and we still don't want to be germ spreaders so we wash our hands and keep clean but their jewish leaders were washing hands as a ritual and its cleaning value was tenuous it all came up because jesus or because the Jews were critical of Jesus and his disciples who were sitting at a table in the same restaurant with them and they were not washing their hands like the Jewish people did it. And Jesus came back at them saying that their ritual was only pretentious and that it was only a public display and not really a cleaning of the hands. It was a sprinkling of water over hands and not a soapy wash like you'd expect your surgeon to do. And Jesus finished his cleansing observation by saying, and I'm quoting from the Living Bible, your souls are not harmed by what you eat, but by what you, th by, by what you think and say. It is not that which goes into your body that is important, even if you swallow a few germs because your, your stomach is going to digest those and make food out of them anyway, so that's okay. But what comes out of us in terms of our attitudes and spirit of community and helpfulness, that is what pleases God. It is not what goes in that God is concerned about, but God is concerned about what comes out. Now, Jesus' criticism was that they were turning the simplicity of faith 
into a list of rules and rituals that felt like work. They weren't enjoying their faith, they were burdened by their faith. Rather than making their lives joyful and free, their faith was making their lives heavy. Jesus, you know, came into this world to lighten our burdens. We sing hymns with that phrase in it, you know, our burdens will be lighter and stuff like that. Jesus did not come into the world to make us into angels. Now, some of you may think you're angels, but I'm not sure about that. But anyway, Jesus came to help us feel angelic. That didn't make us, not make us an angel, but to help us to feel angelic, kind of like angels. And even though we are of the earth in this moment, Jesus invites us to soar like angels and feel a heavenly bounce in our hearts and steps as we live and celebrate God's forgiving love. Now, what is spirituality? Spirituality is a good feeling. Spirituality is having happy urges to do something really special for someone, or for ourselves, maybe. It, it's, it helps us to do, to, to do the things that are beyond our normal capacity. You know, spirituality is kind of like a circle that has no limits, while laws and rituals tend to be more like a square that are too well-defined. So Jesus is struggling with us to get us out of the box, as it were, and into the circle. Our faith must not feel like work. There's only one profession in the world whose faith can be work, being a minister, okay? I say that kiddingly. Um, it, it, you know, faith... Faith must not be work, but it should give us a joyful freedom from the clutter of life that bogs us down. And the clutter is that feeling of guilt, feelings of having to earn our way into heaven, of having to follow all kinds of rules that are distractions that make for faith redundant and boring. Again, God did not create us to be angels, but God sent Jesus to us to encourage us to live above the surface of the earth to figuratively float a little bit that we might not be caught in the world's quagmire of deceptive and fruitless ideas. Speaking of work, I'm going to give you a working experience that I had. The day after I graduated from high school, I began a summer job at the local paper mill over in Marinette, Wisconsin. And the first day on the job, I had to meet with the safety director to get, learn the safety rules of the plant. And after that portion of his lecture was finished, he ended by saying, and when you go home at the end of the day, we expect you to be exhausted. In other words, the company wanted everything out of us. Nothing left when we went home. And let me tell you that the job I had that first summer met the prescription for an exhausting one. I was a part of a, 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 work, a construction crew with three other young men like myself. And we were a part of a project to replace the boilers in the church boiler room, a church, in the factory boiler room. I, I've done that in church boiler rooms too, by the way. Not worked, but I've changed boilers as a pastor. Anyway, so we, we began tearing down boiler number one. Two, three, and four were still working. They produced steam. And they were hot, as I don't have to mention to you. Uh, and we had jackhammers, and we were plowing out bricks out of the old boilers and putting them in wheelbarrows and wheeling them out about 50 yards to the parking lot where we dumped them in a pile. And it was a, that was one of the hottest summers I think we had for a long time. I remember 100 degree days. So I learned how to sweat, I worked hard. I enjoyed my job, but I betrayed the safety director because I was young and working on my muscles, and after work, I was able to go out and help my farmer friends bale hay. 
And then on two nights a week, I would go to the ballpark and play softball. Then to get up the next morning, go through the routine again. Now we have to work typically to earn money. But we do not have to work or practice unproductive ceremonies to feel the presence of God. Which leads to our second challenge of work. Does your faith work? Is your faith functional? Does it have gears and wheels and plenty of oil so that, that it can not only change your life, but change the life of others around you? It was about 28 years ago that I suggested to the mission committee of this church, then headed by Ray and Ellie Hogue, that this church needed to broaden its mission outlook a little bit. Now this Sturgeon Bay Church had raised every year a lot of money for the one great hour of sharing, which was an offering taken every March. It went to the basic mission support. And uh, the church did very well, it was leader in the conference in raising money, but I found out that was basically, that, that was it. That was our mission emphasis, was the one great hour of sharing. And I thought, well, you know, there are other things going on that we might want to learn about and do. So, Ray and Ellie and the committee uh, began a, a new project. And what was developed is what you see in the church bulletin today. A list of the 12 monthly mission projects. And we have raised, all I can say is a ton of money over the years for those projects. Every month, had a new project, went at it, and uh, was very generous with them. You know, this, this church supports mission stuff like Packer fans support the Packers. They're avid. They go after it. I love that. Last week, uh, our, our youth person was here and gave the children a message. It was Angel's her name. And she mentioned that the, several of the youth, she was one of them, had a project to raise money for uh, a, a child uh, who needed help. Uh, it, it, we call it an orphan child, I believe. And uh, they supported this person for a number of years. And finally, I think a couple of them they had going. And they've all graduated from the program and have grown up. And uh, so they had a great success doing that. You know the old saying, put your money where your mouth is, right? We have shown that we have put our down-to-earth care for others where our hearts are. We have put our down-to-earth care for others where our our hearts are. And thanks to Don Ziegelbauer, who is here today in a great mission committee, we keep raising our church's vision of who we are and why we are. This is making faith work. Now, sometimes we can make faith work all by ourselves. We're good at that. But sometimes we need to team up with others, such as a church. Faith is not a stationary experience. It's a moving entity. We don't say, I got faith and I'm going to bed. No, we should say, I've got faith and I'll have something good to share. Faith is like having a, a handful of helium balloons. Technically, they should make you lighter, right? If you carry balloons around all day, they're going to scale, you'll be lighter. Maybe. Anyway, so I, I was, uh, you know, if you've been around here, I've used balloons a number of times and way back in, in worship, like on Easter Sunday and stuff, and I, balloons are so neat that they work well. I should have had some balloons today for this sermon, too, because I'm talking about balloons. But I, I, I go to the Dollar Tree and get helium-filled balloons, uh, like we've had Valentine parties and all St. Patrick's parties and stuff. And so one day I was in there carrying out a couple of hand handful of balloons and I asked the, the clerk at the counter I said now if I walk out the door is this going to take me up in the air or not and they kind of smiled at me and said we don't have enough balloons for you to do that <laughs> you know if we give a child a balloon have you noticed how that affects them 
makes them feel really good. We have some of the Taylor kids here today. Remember coming to Easter worship when we had balloons in the aisles here, and uh, you know, the kids love those balloons. They would be during the worship service, they'd be playing with them, making the balloon dance. You know, we had them tied to all the pews out here. And um, there's something about a balloon that just kind of lifts you up. And you know, give a give a balloon to an adult. Same thing. Get a big smile, and a really a good response. It gives to them a kind of a what I would say, a kind of a heavenly feeling. So far, I have tried to make the point that we cannot create enough earthly goodness to get us to heaven. We cannot obey or follow enough rules or rituals to satisfy our spirituality. We cannot create a greater worth by doing more things. In essence, we must be good for nothing to really please God. That third use of the word work is in the Bible in two verses from James that characterize the thoughts and it wasn't David read uh, from the first chapter. These are in the second chapter so I had to jump ahead a little bit to grab these. But they're, they're kind of the, 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 the central theme of James. He said Faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. And be doers of the word and not hearers only. In essence, our faith does not, or shall we say, our works do not buy us faith. Our works affirm our faith. Paul's letters and other New Testament books are heavy on the theme of grace, which is the heart of New Testament theology. Grace says we are saved by God's goodness and not our own. But James implores us not to fly solo, but to take on some passengers. You know, share your faith and great life of faith with others. You know, faith is more than a ticket to heaven. It is a call to drop care packages to earth and to see the needs of those who struggle with life. Yes, our faith gives us eyes to see those around us who need a boost, and it gives us ears to hear the cry of those who are suddenly in desperate situations. Now today we look at places like Gaza and Ukraine. And as I've been watching their stories, you know, I almost feel numb from hearing of the plight of the peoples there. They once lived in peace and comfort, and one day the bombs arrived. Can you imagine the bombs arriving in Sturgeon Bay or Door County? How that would make us feel? They literally had their, their life security of homes and family and jobs blown away. It wasn't there anymore, wiped out, gone from the face of the earth. I cannot imagine the feeling of innocent people who are carrying on life day to day, having become victims of bad leaders who give them bad directions, and other leaders who, who are greedy to the point of wanting to re-secure territory that their nations once controlled. And that, we, we live in that kind of a world today, unfortunately. So let us keep working by giving to mission programs that extend help and care to helpless war victims and agencies that provide shelter and life support. That really isn't much. It's little, but it is something that will make a difference and is big for us to give. You know, God does not demand that we work to please God. Our biggest job on earth is to simply be a source of help and hope to our fellow beings. Let us pray. And, O oh God, we thank you for the joys of life, the security that we enjoy. And we pray that you will, through them, be able to help us meet the challenges of life. 
Thank you for your love. Thank you for your salvation. Indeed, O oh God, help us to be caring believers. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. We don't take an offering by passing offering plates in our church at this point in time, uh, but we find an offering box in the back, of the, down the center aisle in the back of the church, which we invite you to use to put your gifts in. Also, I have mentioned already a couple of prayer, prayer concerns besides those in the bulletin. Remember Miriam Erickson and Dick Chappelle, both of whom are in hospice care. Let's pray together that they might have strength and might be able to find creative ways to deal with their many days as they lay in their beds. And for any others that you may know who have needs that need to be remembered, please remember them uh, in your prayers today. Let us bow in a moment of silent prayer. We thank you, O oh God, that you have taught us how to give. You've given to us the ultimate gift, the gift of life and salvation. Help us to enjoy and to share. We thank you for this church and for the work that we have done over the years of reaching out to other people in other places. We're grateful for the leadership that we have had who have kept our sights high Continue to bless us, O oh God, and to inspire us and help us to do great things. We pray for those today, O oh God, who are in places of helplessness. Again, thinking of people in war-torn areas and who are victims of what's going on in their countries. Be with them as they try to find places of safety places of security, places where there is food. Give them strength, O oh God, to endure and to somehow make life work. We're thankful for the opportunities we have to support and help peoples in those situations and help us to take them and manage them well. Again, we thank you for life and for the wonder of faith. Help us, O oh God, to know you and your love and to share it freely. In the name of our Christ we pray. Amen. I invite you to turn in your hymnal to number 639 in the back of the hymnal. It's a prayer at the bottom of one of the pages. And I'd like to break this uh, prayer down into parts so that we can do it responsibly. So I will start at the top paragraph, and then when it says coffee, you're on. Then I'll do the many, made the simple things, and then you start where who have their lives. And then we'll all finish in the sentence down below uh, together, okay? And if you can't remember that, just read wherever you want. <laughs> oh God, just as the disciples heard Christ's words of promise and began to eat the breaded and drink the wine of the suffering of a long remembrance and in the joy of a hope. Grant that we may hear your words spoken in each thing of everyday affairs.
May simple things speak to us of your mercy and tell us that life can be good. And may these sacramental gifts make us remember those who do not receive them. Christ was also sacrificed, and may we learn that we participate in the saving sacrifice of Christ when we participate in the suffering of his little ones. Amen. And I'll turn to page 14 in front of the hymnal, page number 14. You respond with the bold print. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread. And he gave thanks to you and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of my new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, the mighty acts of Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is dying, Christ is risen, Christ is alive. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. To your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. together the hymn, Fill My Cup, Lord, many of you know it by heart, it's just one stanza, it's number 641 in the hymnal, if you need to look and read it.
and the blood of our, blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, let us drink in remembrance of Christ, died on the cross for us. Let us pause in a moment of prayer. And, O oh God, we thank you for speaking to us in earthly symbols. Indeed, you gave your Son to us. You allowed him to come to earth to gather the sheep of your flock, to teach us where life was. We're thankful, O oh God, that you love us and have given even your Son in death for our salvation. Help us to believe. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. So let us join in singing the last hymn. Now may God bless you on this holiday weekend. May you be safe. May you be happy. May you have lots of fun. Bless, blessings as you go your way. Amen.